In 1971, 11 year old Colin Robson was digging in the backyard of their council house at number 3 Reed Avenue in Hexham when he uncovered a small round stone head with a crude human face. Soon after this, Colin's brother Leslie unearthed a second head. Almost as soon as the objects had been unearthed, the Robson's house became a focus for strange phenomena. There was an indescribable feeling of disturbance, as though something very bad was happening. Objects smashed to the ground, with nobody responsible for moving them. A telephone was constantly threatening to fall to the ground until the cable was torn off the wall. A lock broke into two pieces after the door slammed hard. The walls began to crack and the pictures began to twist. One night, the Robsons awoke to the sound of crashing glass. For no apparent reason, the living room window had simply exploded, throwing splinters everywhere. The most annoying thing was the constant stench, a smell of wild animal urine that permeated every corner of the house. Their next door neighbour, a Mrs Dodd, then had an experience in her house when her small son exhibited bite marks as if a large dog had savaged him and there was that wet dog smell in the house all the time. Ellen felt an unseen presence knock her to the ground and felt thick fur rubbing against her skin. Later she and her daughter were up late when both of them witnessed a half man half wolf entering the bedroom. The pair screamed but the creature seemed oblivious to them and simply left the room. They heard it padding down the stairs on its hind legs and the front door was found wide open when they looked. They said it seemed like the creature was searching for something and had left the house to continue elsewhere. The Robson children returned home from school one day to find the werewolf creature in their lounge. They raced out terrified and a group of men ran in to find nothing save for that stink of animal again. The family had experienced enough and the heads were sent to Newcastle whilst a Catholic priest was brought in to bless the house. The museum subsequently loaned the heads to prominent Celtic scholar Dr Anne Ross in Southampton for an opinion as to their date. Dr Ross believed that they were examples of the Celtic cult of the head and she published the heads in 1973 in the journal Archaeologia Aeliana under the title of Some New Thoughts on Old Heads. The article compared some recently discovered stone heads from the Hadrian's Wall area. In 1978, Dr Ross gave an interview to Peter Underwood where she described her paranormal experiences with the objects. She stated that as soon as she saw the heads, she felt a strong instinctive aversion to them. When she brought them into her home, inexplicable crashes and other sounds were heard by all the family and the doors were seen to open and close on their own. Early one morning, Dr. Ross awoke feeling a coldness in the bedroom and saw a large dark creature that appeared to be half wolf, half man, exiting through the doorway. She says that she felt an irresistible urge to follow it. She stated in the interview that it was about six feet high, slightly stooping, and it was black against the white door, and it was half animal and half man. The upper part, I would have said, was a wolf and the lower part was human and I would have again said that it was covered with a kind of black very dark fur. It went out and I just saw it clearly and then it disappeared and something made me run after it a thing I wouldn't normally have done but I felt compelled to run after it. I got out of bed and I ran and I could hear it going down the stairs then it disappeared towards the back of the house. A few days later, Dr. Ross and her husband arrived home from London one evening to find their teenage daughter in a state of shock. Dr. Ross described her daughter's experience as follows. She had opened the front door and a black thing, which she described near a werewolf as anything, jumped over the banister and landed with a kind of plop. It padded with heavy animal feet and rushed towards the back of the house and she felt compelled to follow it. It disappeared into the music room right at the end of the corridor and when she got there it had gone suddenly she was terrified dr ross insisted the creature appeared to be very real 
It was not something shadowy, or only glimpsed out of the corner of the eye. It was noisy, and everyone who came to the house commented on a definite presence of evil. And there were other manifestations attributed to this unwelcome lodger. While he never observed it directly, Dr. Ross's archaeologist husband was fully aware of this unwelcome guest's presence. The phenomena ceased after Dr. Ross had disposed of her entire collection of Celtic heads and sent the two heads here back to Newcastle. She commented on the paranormal activity in the house with, the day the heads were removed from the house, everybody, including my husband, said it was as if a cloud had lifted. And since then, there hasn't been, really, a trace of it. <laughs>